today our topic of discussion would be an important topic based on plotter's module pi pot of gold so what is roman comedy it is a style of the play that was imported to italy and adopted by roman culture the plays of plotter's and terence revolve around stock characters braggarts soldiers irascible old men misers young lovers and resourceful slaves the plays were bawdy with lots of physical action and acrobatics what was the society of the ancient roman the society of the ancient roman was shared with you so let us start from the beginning module 5 plotters pot of gold it is in as ls ou cu and other universities it is important because here we come to know about the latin dramas that is the roman comedy the roman comedy it was a style of the play that was imported to italy and adopted by roman culture the plays of plotters and terence revolved around stock characters braggart soldiers irascible old men misers young lovers and resourceful slaves the plays were bawdy with lots of physical action and acrobatic what was the society of ancient rome the social structure of the ancient rome was based on heredity property wealth citizenship and freedom it was also based around men women who were defined by the social status of their fathers or husbands women were expected to look after the house houses and very few had any real independence so what was the roman comedy based on now there are many details and many authorly uh, authorly dedication to the thought of this roman comedy which became very common during this period the term roman comedy is conventionally applied in modern scholarship to a particular form of light drama in latin represented to the mainly by the extant republican plays of plautus and terence based on greek new comedy some comedies in ancient rome for intrigue was also incredibly significant to the rise and complexity of the roman economy and the roman traded commodities such as wine oil grain salt arms and iron to countries primarily to the west what were the characteristics of roman comedy the so roman theater and comedy is often it's often vulgar and crude content and the plays also features stereotypical characters each exemplifying some flaws or archetype which provided much of the situational humor who wrote roman comedies titus masses masses plotters indeed it takes some truly gifted to make plotters as comedy in a work of stage the full name or so we gather of the roman playwrights popularly known as plotters is titus masses plotters but there is much to make and a uh, suspect this way not his real name why because there are differences of opinion regarding the roman comedy various authors have come to various conclusions and it's very difficult at times to make it as simple as it is possible for the students to make for them very much possible to learn it easily so 
naturally we have to depend a lot on the scholars who have contributed to their popularity in the Roman comic world. And yet, it has to be admitted that they have made a great contribution to the society of drama. So Plotus's name, the type of society Rome that time had was patriarchal society and hierarchical. The Roman role, Romans' role in society of people known for the military, political, and social institutions. The ancient Romans conquered vast amounts of land in Europe and Northern Africa, built roads and aqueducts, and spread Latin, the language far and wide. The history of the Roman Empire can be divided into three distinct periods. The period of kings, 625 to 510 BC, Republican of Rome, 510 to 31 BC, and Imperial Rome, 31 BC to AD 476. How did Romans change comedy instead of be using chorus? Roman comedies added music to complement the dialogue as it was being performed. So, what was the famous Roman comedian, Plautus? He attained such popularity that his name alone became a hallmark of theatrical success. Plautus's comedies are mostly adapted from Greek model for a Roman audience and often based directly on the works of Greek playwrights. Where did Roman comedies take place? In Greek town, they could not do much as far as building and their set and the set goes. So the costumes important for the illusion, the spoken word and the manner of speaking was important. Example of ancient comedy, old comedy is sometimes called aristocratic comedy after its most famous exponent, whose living surviving plays include The Clouds, 423 BC. A satire on the misuse of philosophical argument directed chiefly against the Socrates and the Frogs, 105 BC. A satire on Greek drama directed chiefly against Euripides. So whatever may, the, whatever may they be, the various controversies involved into such a situation or dates. But it is true that these comedies became very popular during the period. And people used to visit the theaters during the time to see such comedies being acted on stage. Therefore, the Romans started to develop their own comedies on the basis of Greek examples from about 240 BC. What they selected as models were almost exclusively pieces of new comedy. Accordingly, this type of comedy in Rome is often called Roman new comedy. However, like so many things that the Romans adopted from the neighbor, they did put a uniquely Roman spin on many of those ideas. In one way, they differed. The Romans focused more on comedy and then it did the Greeks. So common characteristics of the comedy include this use of language, which ranges from vernacular speech to puns and wordplay. It's use of taboo subjects and the use of incongruence and juxtaposition. All Roman comedies that have survived can be categorized as fabula palatia, comedies based on Greek subjects and are written by two dramatists, Titus, Massius, Plautus, in short, Plautus, and Publius Terentius, Terence, in short. So, comedy is a genre, is a genre nor of dramatic performance, having a light, a humorous tone that depicts amusing incidents and in which the characters ultimately triumph over adversity. Aristophanes, he first wrote the comedy. Starting from 425 BC, Aristophanes, a comic play and satirical author of the ancient Greek theater, wrote 40 comedies, 11 of which survived. Who was the first writer of comedies then was Aristophanes, the first writer of the genre whose works are preserved Entire is Aristophanes, a late classical comic poet whose plays like old comedy in general are raucous and political, closely tied to current affairs. Then who is the father of the Roman drama? Lucius Livius Andronicius, born 284 BC. Talentum, Magna Gracia, 
now Taranto, Italy, died 204 BC, founder of Roman epic poetry and drama. What were the two main classes of society for the Roman? Roman citizens were divided into two distinct classes, the plebeians and the patricians. The patricians were the wealthy upper class people. Everyone else was considered a plebeian. And what were the three classes of Roman society? Class structure in ancient Rome was very formal and official. Record of each class were kept and being wealthy were often not enough to move up through the classes. There were three basic divisions in Roman society, citizens, non-citizens, and slaves. So the two main social orders in ancient Rome were the patricians and plebeians. In Roman society, the aristocrats were known as patricians. Patricians, the highest position of the government were held by two consuls, leaders, who ruled the Roman Republic. A senate composed of patricians elected these consuls. Or at this time, lower class citizens or plebeians had virtually no say in the government. How did Roman divide the society? Roman political institution reflected Roman society, which was divided into classes. The patricians were these elites and the plebeians, the common people. Initially, only the patricians were able to hold political office and make important decisions. The Roman Empire itself built upon the legacy of other cultures and had long lasting influence with broad geographical reach on a great range of cultural aspects, including state institutions, law, cultural values, religious beliefs, technological advances, engineering, and language. So the Roman society, it encompasses the Roman kingdom, 753 to 509 BC, Roman Republic, 509 to 27 BC, and Roman Empire, 27 BC to 476 AD, until the fall of the Western Empire. So the ancient Rome began as an Italic settlement, traditionally dated to 753 BC beside the river Tiber in the Italian peninsula. The top Roman society, Roman social classes, pyramid, we can say, emperor under the empire. He was the most important person in the empire and could not be questioned. Then comes the Senate as a small group of men who wrote and discussed laws and rules in the Senate. Then come the Castrians. They were upper middle class men, often merchants or military men described as knights. So in 240 BC, full length scripted plays were introduced to Rome by the playwrights of the uh, Livius Andronicius, a native of the Greek city of Tarentum in southern Italy. The earliest Latin plays to have survived intact are the comedies of plotters, which were principally adaptations of Greek new comedy. The new comedy influenced much of the Western European literature, primarily through plotters, and Terence, in particular, the comic drama of Shakespeare and Ben Jonson, Congreve and Whitecherry, and in France, Moliere. So, main difference between comedy versus tragedy. Comedy and tragedy are two genres and norms of the literature that traces the origins back to ancient Greece. In simple terms, the main difference between comedy and tragedy in that comedy is a humorous story with a happy ending while well, a tragedy is a serious story with a sad ending. Plotters, born in 254 BCE, Sarsin Ambria, Italy, died in 184 BC. Great Roman comic dramatist whose work loosely adapted from Greek plays, adapted a truly Roman drama in the Latin language. So, from the various information that we gathered, we can see that there were many things, many information untold by us, the society in the beginning of comedy in Rome. Anti-Roman sentiments may have run rampant through Asculum, a city on the Roman Empire's Adriatic coast, but it was still a, no laughing matter. Politics in the first century BC when Aculum and other Italian tribes rebelled against the empire in what would come to be known as the social war were no joke. 
but still didn't stop comedians and actors from injecting politics into their performance, often at their own risk. In a story recounted by Diodorus Siculus in Library of History, a performer portrays an anti Roman stance only to be murdered by Roman soldiers for doing so. In the next act, a comedian announced to the crowd, I'm not a Roman either. I traveled throughout Italy searching for favors by making people laugh and giving pleasure. So spare for the swallows, which the gods allow to nest safely in all our houses. Fortunately, his request was heeded and he survived the experience. The ancient Romans enjoyed many flavors of the theatrical performance from classical theatrical comedies to the more impromptu performances of actors who did short sketches and used physical humor. The earliest known performance came from the town in southern Italy called Itala in the 4th century BC. It wasn't until 346 BC that Roman historian Livy writes or L-I-V-Y writes of performances in Rome prop as part of a religious festival to request that the gods ward off the play. But generally speaking, theater and comedy weren't considered acts of worship. Performances were staged in makeshift theaters upon open to the elements, unlike the amphitheaters of Greek performances. Pompey became the first to erect a permanent theater in Rome in 55 BC, built of stone and seating thousands of spectators. As theater evolved, comedies began to be staged at public games. Most comedians were poorly paid, but exceptionally popular ones make men like Aesop, Aesop, Aesop say, and Rossicus who acted in dramas and comedies could earn sizable fortunes, according to George Duckworth, the nature of the Roman comedy. There are few caveats when it comes to understanding the political comedy of ancient Rome. First, however much we might like to interpret Roman humor through the lens of modern taste and culture, and a gulf of 2,000 years divides us. Even popular humor from a few decades ago fails to elicit a mark today. So it is unfair to expect comedy from two millennia ago to hold up. As classic professors Gregory Hayes writes in the New York Review of Books, in studying the other cultures, we are trapped as the anthropologist Clifford Gertz once put it between the consoling party that we are all like to one another and the worrying suspicion that we are not. Second is the unanswerable question of which Roman is made and consume comedy. The surviving record unduly privileges men, women, men, citizen men, and split citizens men in Rome, says C.W. Marshall, a professor of Greek at the University of British Columbia. The record skews towards a small portion of society. So regardless of the social stature, comedy didn't necessarily mean that we think of as comedy today. Comedians were often performers who tackled non-tragic work. Comedic poets used puns and wordplay, as did mimes. These weren't silent performers like Marcel Marcio, but rather the equivalent of the sketch of the comedians. And the numbers even, uh, even included women. The performances were largely improvised and used facial expressions and costumes to imitate and mock everyone from pompous politicians to rustic tourists. In the early 200s and late 100s BC, Comic dramatist Plautus and Terence, Terence wrote more than 25 plays and combined the earliest complete Latin text. So we find that history talks a lot, comedy jokes at us for wanting to hold onto ourselves, for thinking that our destiny is stable, writes University of Manchester classic professor Alison Sharrock in the reading room comedy, Poetics and Playfulness in Plautus and Terence. For hundreds of years following the death of the two fathers of the theatrical comedy, their successors used humor to spend, to un upend expectations and antagonize Roman society and engage with political discourse of the day. Take Seneca the Younger, a philosopher and advisor to the Emperor Nero in 54 CE. Seneca penned a short chat called the Apo. Colosyntosis, Apocolosyntosis, which mocked the recently murdered emperor Claudius. So in the play, Seneca very skillfully and wickedly 
mock Claudius, many physical and mental ailments, including a speech impediment and physical weakness, writes classicist H. Mac L. Curry. Seneca used Claudius' fondness for dice games. The late emperor wrote a book on the topic and even had his carriage outfitted so he could play while on the move as a nasty punishment for the late emperor. While Seneca used this pen to elicit laughter and derision and did with the relative impunity, other comedian Warren Sulaki, being a comedic performer instead of a writer, came with a major disadvantage. So it meant you couldn't be a citizen. Performers were among the infamous INFA MIS and couldn't call themselves citizens of Rome or get any of the associated benefits. For the rare comedians who work for their way out of acting and into writing, there were no promise of keeping the higher social status. So it is an interesting example of a comedian spontaneously participating in critical political discourse against the most powerful person in the world. Yet laughter wasn't solely a tool of, of the oppressed. For every laugh in the face of any autocracy, there was another laugh but the powerful at the expense of the weak. Writes classical historians Mary Burr, beard and laughed in ancient Rome on joking, tickling, tickling and cracking up. In modern liberal democracies, comedians are free to express themselves politically, but in ancient Rome, the risk of punching up comedies six mirror the stories of comedians in today's autocracies. Take Egyptian comedian Basim Yusuf, the former surgeon, Hosted show the targeted Egyptian president Mohammed Morsi and religious leaders for criticism, citing the president's failure to live up to the campaign promises and the Muslim Brotherhood abuse of power. So even even so, sometimes laughter is better than nothing. When life is dealt, you autocrat. Sometimes you have turned them into a joke. So it had to be as it is. And of course, Beard writes about ancient Rome. Another was to refuse to take it to see it seriously. So here we have come to the conclusion of what we have come to the conclusion that 